हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन द लीनियर एल्जेब्रा टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द लीनियर इंडिपेंडेंस एंड द लीनियर डिपेंडेंस सो अब वी विल एक्सप्लेन दिस लेक्चर विद द हेल्प ऑफ द ट्वेल्व एग्जांपल्स सो दैट यू कैन इजीली अंडरस्टैंड इट माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर गर्ग वर्किंग इन द स्कूल ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स थापर इंस्टीट्यूट इंडिया सो दिस इज अ लेक्चर विच इज कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ द प्रीवियस वन विच इज रिलेटेड टू द रो रिड्यूस एक्चुअल फॉर्म रैंक वैक्टर स्पेस एंड सोन सो यू कैन फाउंड दिस लेक्चर्स ऑन द प्ले लिस्ट मैथमेटिक्स टू चैनल नेम डॉक्टर हरीश गर्ग सो and let v be the vector space of the field f then the vectors that is a n the n vectors v1 v2 and vn is said to be the linear dependent or the linear independence over this field when when uh, if there exists a alpha i from this field such that if you write the linear combination of them if if you put them as a zero then at least one of these alpha i is a non zero then you can call as the linear dependent on the other hand if all of the alpha i is are zero for each alpha i is are zero then you can say this is my linear independent so that is a very simple concept about that if each of the alpha i is are my zero for each of i then we call as the linear independent otherwise linear dependent De remember that this linear dependent and the linear independent dependent on the field f what is the meaning of that so if i just consider say two vectors v1 and v2 now if i consider alpha 1 and alpha 2 from say complex field or i can take the alpha 1 and alpha 2 from the real field so let's say if i consider from the complex field if i consider alpha 1 is 1 alpha 2 is iota then you can clearly see that this property will satisfy v1 is my 1 plus alpha 2 is my iota and this is you can see that this is zero what is the meaning of that can alpha 1 or alpha 1 is zero no since alpha 1 is non zero alpha 2 is also non zero so this property will satisfied hence this is a li ld on the other hand if you take an alpha from the field r if f is my r then can you can you say this is a here you can see this value you can equate the real and imaginary part you will get both as a zero so therefore it is my li so you can see these vectors are ld over the complex field while this is li over the real field that's why these are depending on the field r we are telling you about the four different methods how you can check whether they are li or ld so let consider v1 v2 and vn are the vectors from the vector space v then the first method is as we discussed if you start from here if you find all of the alpha is i zero then we call as the li otherwise ld second method is you can construct the matrix a by writing each of the column these are my column which are here the matrix a these are the column matrix consist of the elements of the v1 v2 and if you find the determinant if it is zero then we call as the ld linear dependent otherwise we call as the li third method is you can start with the rank of the matrix a whatever the matrix you have compute if you find that the rank of the matrix is less than of the n what is the n is how many vectors are there v1 v2 and vn then we call as the ld if they are exactly they are n then call as the linear independent and the last method is if you have the two vectors if you write as a scalar multiple of this like if i say 1 comma 2 and another one is say 3 comma 6 then you can clearly see that 3 comma 6 can be written as 3 times 1 of 2 so this value is my alpha which is a non zero then you can say this is my ld otherwise it is a li or you can say the v1 and v2 are collinear this the meaning is collinear or one of them is a scalar multiple of the other we will see solve all those 12 question with the help of these four methods are there since these are my vectors on the other hand if you have given functions f1 f2 and f3 like f1 is my say sin x f2 is my e raised to power 3x this is my say x square then how you can check whether they are li or ld the first one is similar you can say if your functions are my differentiable then you can write as the alpha 1 here and so on so if you can solve it if you get alpha 1 is 0 alpha 2 is 0 and so on then we call as the li otherwise it's a ld remember this means be zero for all of the t on the other hand if you have more than two function then we can construct this matrix called as the romskian like f1 f2 f3 then their first derivative and their second derivative so on and if you get this is a zero for all the values of the x in the domain then you can call as the ld if they are for the sum value of the x they are non zero then we call as the li for example let's discuss about that 12 examples with all these methods now you can say this is my functions so how you can check that whether the function is li or ld you can start with here take the two vectors two scalars alpha 1 and alpha 
such that alpha 1 v1 alpha 2 v2 now instead of the v1 it is my f1 and f2 now here what is the domain is my x belongs to the minus 1 to 1 can this functions f1 and f2 are differentiable over this it is not because you can see mode of x is not differentiable so what you can do is that since my definition is for all the x so you can take any of the two values from this domain because we need the alpha 1 and alpha 2 only the two constants so we need any two values so you can choose any of the two values when x is half you can substitute here it is my alpha 1 by 4 plus alpha 2 by 4 is 0 and when you take x is minus of the half it is my plus 1 by 4 this is minus 1 by 4 this is plus here now can you solve these two equations if you solve this equation you can add them and you will get both as a 0 therefore it is my ally if you look about this another example say this is my x and this is my x square they are ally clearly why because if you consider about the two functions alpha 1 of this alpha 2 of this now you can see both are the differentiable so since it is all of the x so you can choose any of the x you can choose x is 1 x is my 3 you can substitute here and so on so say i can take x is 1 and x is 2 here can you solve them if you solve them you can multiply by 2 and subtract them you will get alpha 2 is a 0 substitute 1 you will get alpha 1 as a 0 now you can see both are 0 so the functions is my l look at this one now they are the vectors so we can apply these four methods in this particular example so let's say start the first one now you can see the field this is my field f so i can take alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 from the r you can see there are the three vectors now i can substitute the value of the v1 v2 and the v3 here now you can equate the coefficient of the first pair second pair and the third pair now can you solve this equation you can solve this with the help of the calculator you can solve this with the help of the ax is equal to 0 by using the rank method and so on after the solving you will get the answers as alpha 1 alpha 2 0 it means they are l second method is we can use this one we can write the matrix a this is the column consists of the matrix v vector v1 here this is the column corresponding to the vector v2 this is the vector v3 now we can find the determinant if it is a non-zero then it's li if it is zero then ld you can find the determinant of this three cross three now you can see it is a non-zero so it is a li we have the same answers look at the another method third method is you can find the rank of the matrix a so this is the matrix which is the column consists of this what is the purpose of the rank your target is to make this value this value and this value to be a zero how you make them you can use the row elementary operation r2 minus of this and so on now your target is to make them this as a zero you can add them r3 plus r2 you will get here now what is the rank of this matrix you can see the rank of this matrix is 3 how many vectors are there it is same as that of the n so you will get as a l i -L. look at the another example are there now you can see there are the two vectors now in this case now my field is my f so it means i have to take alpha 1 and alpha 2 from the field c it is given to you that they are ld so what is the meaning of that at least one of the alpha i is my non-zero at least one of them now you can substitute the value of the alpha 1 and alpha 2 here you can equate the coefficients now you can write like here now you, you can divide them clearly says the alpha 1 is non-zero and alpha 2 is non-zero both are non-zero why because say if alpha 1 is 0 then from here you can easily find that alpha 2 is 0 so if both are 0 it means they are li which is contradiction because it is given to you that it's a ld so it means both the values are non-zero now you can divide them since they are non-zero so it will be cancelled out and after that you will here you can solve them you will get this required answer look at the second method now since there are the two vectors so we can use them here so where i can take as a beta here so beta is a non-zero which is from the factor c we can find the value of the beta from here if we can get the value as a non-zero then it's a ld otherwise not we can substitute the value of the v1 and v2 we can equate the coefficients now if you divide them if you divide them you will get the same expression as here then you will get this one otherwise if you add them what will happen this is my 2 if you add them it will be 2 beta so from here you will get beta 1 is my 1 so substitute this beta 1 is 1 in here you will get the value as same of it 
look at the third method again now you can write as a matrix b this is the element of the corresponding v1 this is the element of the v2 now you can find that determinant so since it is given to you that they are ld so it means that determinant is my zero it is given to you now you can find the determinant of this you will get this expression as here look at the another one again it is given to you they are ld so what is the meaning of that we can start from here it is given to you ld it means not all the values are zero you can equate the coefficients now how you can find the value of the k now from here you can solve the equation number 2 and 3 or you can add them 1 and 2 you can see this value will be cancel out you can multiply this value by 2 and add them you will get here substitute this value in this expression you will get here now from here either this is zero or this zero so if alpha 3 is my zero you can substitute here this is my or you can substitute 4 you will get alpha 2 is zero you can substitute alpha 2 and alpha 3 here you will get alpha 1 is zero what is the meaning of that they are li but which is contradiction that they are ld it means this can never be a zero therefore you can get k as 3 by 5 this is the first method you can do the same way now you can write the column this is the column corresponding to the v1 1 minus 1 3 this is the column v2 this is the v3 now you can use either of them since it is given to you that they are ld so it means that determinant is a zero you can uh, solve that determinant you will get the same answer if you want to apply this third method how you can solve that you have to find the rank of this matrix how you find the rank of this matrix your target is to become this value zero this value zero this value as a zero how you can solve them you can apply r2 plus r3 r3 here now your target is to become this value as a zero now it is given to you it is given to you ld so it means the rank of this must be less than of the n how many vectors are there three so when it will be less than of the three only when this value will be zero so once it will be zero so k will be 4 by 3 now this is the polynomial now we can apply the same approach now you can see these are my say this is my v1 this is v2 v3 i can consider the three scalars we can here now you can equate the coefficients are there how you can equate the coefficient this is the x square this is the x this is my constant now what is the coefficient of the x square this is alpha 1 this is my zero and so on now you can substitute alpha 1 here it will be my alpha 2 minus alpha 3 is zero from here it is alpha 2 plus alpha 3 is zero once you will solve them you will get alpha 2 is zero and you will get alpha 3 is also zero and alpha 1 is also be zero so all the values are zero it means they are ld if you apply the second method you can write the matrix corresponding to this what is that x square minus 1 so i can write this value as of polynomial so the coefficient is 1 this is zero this is minus 1. same for here i can write x plus 1 as a 0x 0 1 1 you can find the determinant it is a non zero so it's a l you can also find the rank of this matrix and you can write like this way you can start with the second example so say this is v1 this is v2 this is v3 this is v4 so i have to take as a four scalars are there equate the coefficients are there this is my x square this is my x and this is my constant so now you after the solving you will get the values of the alpha 1 alpha 2 and so on otherwise you can write this matrix as of ax is 0 what is a a you can write as alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha 4 now alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha 4 and so on. now you can write this either now it is not possible to find the determinant because it is not a square matrix so you have to find the rank of the matrix so you target here now your target is to become them as a 0 you will get here what is the rank of this matrix it is a 3 is it less than of the and how many vectors are there four so since rank is less than of the four it means these are ld look at this one here now you can see the dimension is my 3 so remember always so let n be the number of the vectors how many vectors are there four what is the dimension of the vector space 3 so whenever dimension of the vector is less than of the number of the vector it is always ld so you can see here there are the four vectors dimension of the vector space is 3 so it is a ld otherwise you can write as a matrix these are the column corresponding v1 v2 v3 v4 
right because uh, it is not possible to find that determinant so you have to compute the rank are there so you can write here what is the rank of this 3 which is less than the 4 it means they are added look at the function now you can see these are my functions so how you can find the functions you have to write this fun matrix so see there are three vectors functions you can write here so we can start with here this is f1 f2 f3 you can find the determinant how you can find the determinant i can take e raised to power 3x common from here x from here now you can solve this value you can get this after I simplify you will get here you can also simplify this this is x cube this is x cube this is x square you can simplify you will get here can this value be a zero now if it is a zero for all the x then you say ld you can clearly say this is a non-zero for non-value of that because there is not possible for the roots you can see plus minus b square minus of 24 that's the complex roots are there so it means this can never be a zero so it means these are for some value of the x they are non-zero so they are l this part you can do it yourself look at here again there are the two vectors which are ld over the complex field which are li over the here that's a very simple let's do the first part here i can take firstly there are the two vectors we can start from here we can equate them you can equate the real and imaginary parts these are my real parts and here when alpha 1 is 0 you can substitute here alpha 2 is 0 and from here we will get both values as 0 on the other hand when you take the vectors since there are the two vectors so we can find the value of the alpha if it is a non-zero then they are ld otherwise ln that's a very simple we can substitute here equate the coefficients now from here you can get as the value of the alpha which is a non-zero can you find the same value of the alpha from here now i can rationalize them what is that this is 2 iota upon 1 this is 1 plus 1 is 2 and 1 minus iota so what is that this is iota times 1 minus iota so if you solve them this is again get the value of 1 plus iota now you can see both the values are same and it is a non-zero so you will get the answer as ld so you can see this is a li over the real vector over the real field however for the complex they are ld look at the last example are there so it is given to you that the vectors s is my subset of the vector space over the field f Prove that S is Li if and only if here. That's again very simple. Assume that S is my Li. Your target is to prove here. What is the meaning of that? It means how many vectors are there? This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, up to the n are there. So I can consider the beta 1, beta 2 and beta n are my scalars from the field F such that here. Your target is to prove beta i are my 0 then only it's a L. How you can prove that? You can equate the coefficients you can see this is my beta 2 upon x1 x2 and xn what is that x1 x2 and xn what is given to you these are my s but s is my li so once s is my li what is the meaning of that this is coefficient of the this is my zero because s is my li now can you solve that if beta n is zero what is the upper value beta n minus one here so if beta n is my zero what is the meaning of that beta n minus 1 is 0 from above from the above equation this is 0 and so on so you will get all the values as my 0 so hence once all the beta is i 0 you will get t is my l now same way you can assume that t is my li and your target is to prove as this is my so again you can do the same way you can start from here and you can write the similar manner so you can that part you can do it yourself so I hope you can enjoy this session too with these several shortcut tricks and the several method you can find the li and ld. We will see in the next class on the how you can find the basis and the dimensions. Till then you can simply follow this playlist and the channel name Dr. Harishkar finding the various videos on the subject mathematics too. Till then you can follow this link for finding the various videos. Best of luck students. Happy luck.